Hey folks, as with most of my reviews, I'm starting off in the kitchen here. Uh, I've had my Vaporfly 4% for about, I don't know, six months, and I'm just going to do a, a quick little review video. I haven't put many miles in them. You know, I'm just kind of uh, increasing mileage at this point and was working up towards a half marathon. This was going to be my half marathon shoe. And then with the pandemic, everything kind of stopped. Um, I hurt my hip in January, so I kind of didn't run for about two months. I'm getting back in shape, and now that I've put some more miles in the Nova Blast, Pegasus Turbo, uh, and a couple other shoes, I'm gonna take out the Vaporflies for a about a one hour run today. Um, I've also been focusing on, on my runs, thinking more about a couple things that um, Colin McCourt, who's another fantastic YouTuber, I think he may be from Scotland, um, but he's a um, couple tips he's had is focusing on relaxing. So I know when I run, sometimes I'm so focused on like how hard I'm running, my pace, all those things that runners get obsessed with. And you really just want to, you just can relax all the way. He says it starts in your eyebrows, just relax your whole body. Uh, it could really help your overall, just let your body flow through the run. I know it's, it sounds silly, but, um, the more tension you have, the more difficult it is to get a rhythm, to really just flow out there and breathe smoothly. So I'm gonna to try to focus on just relaxing. And another big thing that, that's helped me a lot here lately is I'm just gonna start a podcast. It's like an hour and five minute podcast and I'm just gonna run until it's done. So I'm not gonna, I just don't look at the watch. Um, it's so, it's, it's obsessive just to sit here every, every 30 seconds to, I mean, at least a mile, every mile, you're looking, what's my pace, what's my cadence, what's my heart rate? Um, and not that everyone should just run by feels and heart rate means nothing, but uh, I think it makes it a lot more enjoyable if you're out just experiencing the run and not constantly focusing on, oh my God, I'm gonna post this run and they're gonna see I'm running a 989, you know, 10 minute mile or, or you know, why was my heart rate so high on this easy run, that kind of thing. Um, let's see. And I'm not super competitive about running yet, but I'm competitive with myself, uh, as far as I want to improve, but All right, got my pods loaded up, got my watch ready. I'll uh, check in after the run with a few comments. Hey, just finished my run. Uh, I did about four miles. I was planning on doing a 10K, but just just my, my feet weren't feeling great and my breathing was pretty bad. So anyways, I'll, I'll do a quick uh, rehash on the shoe versus the others I've reviewed lately. Thanks a lot. Hey everyone, this is Colin Campbell. These are my thoughts on the Nike, Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. Uh, I did just do about a five minute talk through on the shoe and I guess I hit the uh, photo button rather than the video. So I'm gonna go through this again. Maybe it'll be smoother. Uh, since I've already done it once. Uh, so I'll go through the upper, the midsole, uh, the durability of the shoe, and also a big one for me is the, the fun factor, would I buy this shoe again? Uh, my thoughts on the performance, carbon fiber plate, and that kind of thing. So really quickly, out of the box, step and feel. Uh, it's gonna be different than anything you've ever tried on. It does feel like a clown shoe. Uh, you feel like you're up on this platform and you're kind of leaning forward and as you step, this Zoom X, it just smush, just, just collapses in uh, and just make you wonder like, how am I gonna run in these things? Uh, once you get out and start running, they do come alive. Uh, but as far as the step and feel is a little bit tight through the midfoot and forefoot, to me, the fly knit 
while it will stretch out, initially it might feel a little bit tight, but it will adapt to your foot. So for me, I had a, a lot of difficulty getting a lockdown on top of my foot with the lacing uh, without creating pressure, pressure points, uh, which you can see it's such a thin knit that, you know, if your lacing's pushing down uh, in, in any particular area, you're gonna feel it. So on my first few runs, I ended up just loosening the laces and then I had heel slippage, uh, which caused other issues, but never to the point of blisters, just I could feel like I wasn't secure in the shoe. Um, very minimal heel collar, the pull tab. Uh, so there's little, little guide cushions uh, through this minimal heel collar that once you break the upper end and it adapts to your foot, you can get a better lockdown without pressure points. And then as in like today, I'm about 30 miles into this shoe, uh, my heel felt pretty secure in there. Uh, let's go down to the midsole. So the Zoom X full length, uh, maximally cushioned 10 mil drop. So 39 millimeter heel, 29 millimeter forefoot. This is the lightest shoe I own at 7.9 ounces in a men's 11 and a half. So you won't have the excuse of the shoe slowing you down or just be your old age and tired muscles uh, holding you back. So the, the midsole, uh, the, the plate itself almost gives a rocker feel. Uh, I feel more of a, once I get a rhythm going, that it maintains my efficiency, and which is a lot of the marketing is you can be up to a 4% more efficient runner in this shoe. This shoe though is of course marketed towards elite athletes running at uh, you know, 430 mile, five minute mile uh, versus just an average person out jogging around the neighborhood at a nine or 10 minute mile, I'm not gonna have the same benefits. However, I did do some uh, very amateur uh, trials of my own between this shoe and the Pegasus Turbo 2. I actually felt that the Turbo 2 was more comfortable, which makes sense. This is a racer, it has a plate in it. Um, and my speeds would be very similar in the two shoes, but my heart rate would tend to be a little bit lower in this. Was it placebo? It's possible, uh, but it was consistent through about three different trials where I did the same run on different days and uh, very similar paces. Um, so very efficient, very lightweight. Durability is still gonna be a question mark uh, as far as how long it lasts before it flattens out. I'm only 30 to 40 miles in. I have 30 miles on Strava, and uh, there are times when I forget my watch, I have taken the run at the shoe out for some quick sprints and jogs around the neighborhood too. Uh, outsole durability, I think that's, that's a big negative on this one, but you, you're buying a racer, you're not buying a daily trainer. So you can't really complain on this shoe if it gets you well over 100 miles, in my opinion. Uh, that it, if you, know, you typically should be reserving this type of shoe for a race. Um, if you don't do racing for your tempo runs and speed runs. Uh, I've seen a lot of wear on the lateral portion of the shoe. I think it comes down to such a narrow midfoot area that if I'm trying to land midfoot, um, if I miss at all, if I get tired, I'm tending to land really laterally on this and it's actually, you can see it chipping away at the midsole here. Uh, so I'll, I'll be fortunate to get 150 miles out of this thing. Uh, I've heard a lot of folks say they get about a, a dollar per mile. So this was a $250 shoe. I purchased it for 160. Um, I would buy it again. The fun factor is through the roof. Uh, nothing else feels like it. And to me, running and exercising, it's about having a good time, getting out, enjoying nature, uh, you know, getting in your head a little bit or, or just getting away from work and that type of thing. So I'm always gonna to wanna to try the latest and greatest technology. Uh, I would buy the shoe again. I honestly think I run faster um, and I feel better in the, the Peg Turbo 2 or the A6 Nova Blast. A big negative for me is with this plate, when I run, although this is marketed as a half marathon or marathon shoe, I do get some forefoot soreness which I would attribute, it's a 29 millimeter stack in the forefoot. There should be plenty of cushion, has to be due to that plate. And it's also gonna play with your, your gait cycle and all that. We're not born with a carbon fiber plate in our foot. So the, as far as how you land and how you roll through with a carbon fiber plate shoe, 
there's no way that can be the same as your natural uh, gait cycle. So this shoe does hold tons of records and um, of course newer iterations include the Next Percent, which has a, an even higher stack height in the heel and then a little bit less drops and more foot, four foot stack. It's a eight millimeter drop on the Next Percent as well as a wider landing area. I, I played with the idea of buying those, but uh, I think I'm gonna pass. And then um, also now the Alpha Fly, which has the zoom pods in the forefoot. Those are um, of more interest to me, not the zoom, the Alpha Fly particularly, but the shoes with the zoom uh, air pods, just because I know how well the zoom, uh, zoom air cushioning system has worked for me in the past. It seems to hold up really well for a larger runner such as myself. So that's my thoughts. If you have any comments or uh, have any questions about the shoe, about how they run, how they fit, um, anything like that, uh, just shoot me a comment and uh, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Hey, one last thing. I wanted to wish my wife a happy birthday and happy Mother's Day. Uh, you probably saw the last video of the television on the wall, but uh, this was the fun adventure of last weekend, uh, six, new 65 inch QLED TV. So uh, we got it up on the wall, it took a few Lowe's trips and uh, just overall a great time. But Hey guys, is summer here? Hey Finn, is it summer? All right, pretending like I'm out here. Thanks guys. <laughs>